Hello, and welcome back to It's Always Sunny in Hollywood, where today we're talking about business and crime. Are any of you guys business majors? No? Good, because I have no idea what I'm talking about either. But uh, I'm your host, Lugia, and these two are... Hi, my name is Patrick, and let's get down to business to defeat the mob firm. I don't know. Close enough. I Mulan, like I was like, you started quoting Mulan. Um, I'm, I, uh, I'm a Red Drum Arts. I'm a Red Drum Arts. Guys, wanna uh, jump into news? Yeah, we got a bit of a short news section this time, but may as well get into it. Hey, one one for each of our interests. So, I think it works. Yeah. So, uh, I guess I'll start. Uh, Chainsaw Man Part Two has uh, finally had its uh, new re uh, release date announced. It is coming out July 13th. That's when Serialization is going to start publishing. And uh, Fujimoto, the author, is also having another one-shot coming out July 4th. He's not illustrating it, but he's writing the story. So uh, it's going to be cool. If you're a fan of uh, Fujimoto's work like I am, you know, look forward to it. Anything, uh, anything to say about it, uh, Lugia? Chainsaw Man? <laughs> yeah. No. Nor I. Uh, I. I don't know. I know Jack. All I know is the he just like me for real meme. That's it. Yeah. Um. The anime is coming out soon, so you guys can I don't know watch that. I assume. I highly Chainsaw recommend Man reading is... the manga though. I assume Chainsaw Man is exactly what it sounds like. Yeah, kinda. It's like um, a twisted superhero story. Oh, it's a superhero thing. I mean, I I, I guess I could have assumed that for. I don't know. I. I Chainsaw Man, I picture like a slasher really. villain. It's about like it's like, yeah, a, like a it's kind of like a Hellboy thing, like um a demon like fighting demons. No, he's undeniably a hero. It's um basically uh devils. It's a devil hunter series. Like these these devils exist, and um this one person is like half devil. So I don't know. I think like Blade or whatever. It's a very unique series. Like, the premise is kind of generic, but oh my god, the execution is something else. It's probably my one of my favorite manga series ever. Hmm. Um, I've read all of Fujimoto's works, like his one-shots, his um, other series, Fire Punch, and I'm going to be honest, this guy's like my favorite manga writer ever. I highly recommend it. Anyway, uh, you guys want to talk about your news? Yeah, okay. So, sometime last week, we just got a Nintendo Direct exclusively on the upcoming Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which is a game that I'm very interested in. Uh, what they showed off was really cool. If you're a fan of, like, Final Fantasy V with the job system and how you can customize your party members to be whatever you want, this is going strictly for that. Now, if you know me, I'm a huge Xenoblade nut. I love the first game. It's one of my favorite games of all time. I like 2. It has some things that I don't agree with but at the same time i think overall it's a very good product that's worth your time this is looking to be like the best xenoblade ever if i'm being real i don't know how hard they're gonna push this game on the switch's hardware considering that they're adding like so much i i hope it doesn't dour the experience you know but i all i got to say is i'm really looking forward to it i like the premise they're kind of going with like a Majora's Mask sort of thing where, well, in concept, not in practice. Ten years, your time has expired, run. I don't know, what do you guys think? I don't. I doubt Patrick has seen the trailer. Did you, Red? I did not, but it sounds interesting. Uh, I you're have, right, uh... I, have, I have not seen the trailer. I, I'm not the guy to talk to about Xenoblade. <laughs> Listen, I yeah. lent you the first game, and you didn't play it. That's your fault. I, I, know. I, own, I own X, but I haven't played it yet. Yeah, I, I meant to ask you, what is your opinion on X, Lugia? I have not really played X all that much. I've only played the I first two hours, and I put it down, which is I unfortunate, remember. because I wanted this game for a while. Like, I got it Christmas Day, and I was so excited. Then I played it, I and then I just stopped. I remember you got it, and you said, I have... I, like, a few months went by, I said, how is it? And you said, I haven't finished it. I was like, really? I you? don't know if I was just distracted at the time. I don't remember hating the game. I liked what I played in the short amount of time that I did. It's just, I don't know. I just didn't have the energy to pick it up. But yeah, I think I've said my piece. So, yeah, Xenoblade 3. Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Coming 
Next month, actually. My yeah. goodness. Initially, it was going to come in September, but then Monolith said, no, July. And then Miyamoto said, what the fuck? A rushed game is bad forever. What are you doing? <laughs> anyway, uh, last news story, my contribution. We're fans of Back to the Future, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Well, guess what? They made a musical. Everything's cool. getting a musical. Yeah. <laughs> I say made cool. a musical because it's coming to Broadway. Oh. But here's the thing. I've been hearing for years about a Back to the Future musical, but it officially premiered in Manchester uh, two years ago, and it made its West End premiere just last year, and I've heard pretty great things about it. And we just got confirmation that they're aiming to bring it to Broadway next year. Uh, they they released a cast recording a few months ago, actually, and I gave it a little bit of a listen. It's pretty good stuff. And what I find interesting about the music is that it was composed by the same guy who wrote the music for the movie, Alvin Silvestri. Am I saying that right? Yes. He wrote he wrote the music for it. Lyrics were by Glenn Ballard. But cool. no, Silvestri wrote the score for... The musical, and I find this interesting because because he's in it, they actually incorporate the movie's main theme. You know the do 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 do. They incorporate yeah, that in, Yeah, they incorporate that into some of the songs, and I've never seen that done for a lot of musicals adapted from movies. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Cool little light motif. That, yeah, that's. Yeah, I that's definitely cool want to they, see it. Yeah, that's cool that they added that to the score. I, I wish more movies based on musicals did that. I don't know, maybe some of them do, but none of the ones I've come across. But yeah, I recommend you guys give the soundtrack a listen. It's pretty great. But overall, um, that's all there is to say about it. We don't have a theater or an opening day or a cast or anything. Just, it's going to happen, so... Prepare yourself. Yes. <laughs> Where this musical's going, it doesn't need roads. All right, want to talk about the movie? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so The Firm was released on June 30th, 1993, and it stars Tom Cruise, who you may know from Mission Impossible, A Few Good Men, and a couple of other things. I guess a recent example would be Top Gun Maverick 2. Top Gun? You mean Top Gun 2 Maverick? Is it called Top Gun 2? The first no, one was just Top called Gun Top Maverick. Gun. It's a I think sequel. When I think when he said... I thought when you said two, you meant like two as an also, like T O O. I didn't know you meant two oh. as a number. Sorry, I I don't know why my mind instantly went to the number two. I mean, I mean it is it a is, sequel. It is yeah. the second entry. It, it, technically, yeah, I, that's just where my mind instantly went. I'm sorry, as you were. All right, so this movie had a budget of forty-two million dollars, and it made just over two hundred seventy million. So this was pretty successful, especially for the time. Tom Cruise was definitely a, a box office draw. Yeah. A uh, couple of fun facts I want to share. This film's soundtrack was almost exclusively performed on the piano by Dave Grusin. I don't know about this man's career, but it's pretty cool that he got to perform an entire movie's worth of music, so kudos. Gene Hackman, who plays Avery in the movie, uh, was not on the promotional poster. This was because he entered production late. And the person who was going to initially take his role was Meryl Streep, surprisingly. The producers mm -hmm. wanted a gender swap for Avery's character, but that was cut at the last minute. So then they got Gene to fill in the role and play a male as uh, normal. Man, that's interesting because, like, Hackman's in this movie a lot. Like, how is that a last minute thing? But all right, cool. So this was also the last film to feature Stephen Hill and John Beale as actors i don't know who they played but unfortunately after this movie came out they shortly passed away so rest in peace and another thing that i want to note the firm was initially a novel and there yes, are quite a number john of differences grisham. uh Such as? Yes, also, by uh, john john grisham you guys know who john grisham is no. no oh okay he's one of the most prolific writers like ever he's like up there with um Tom Clancy and J.K. Rowling is one of the best-selling authors. Well, like, well what ever. else did he write? Maybe, maybe I recognize something. Rainmaker. Sounds vaguely familiar. What else did he write? See, that's the that's the thing. He he did not make like a ton of stuff that's super 
like well known. It's just I mean like like something you know, but he he makes a lot of like legal dramas. He he was a former lawyer, so most of his things were legal thrillers. So you know, similar stuff to this, but um, I'm not really drawn to legal dramas that much, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So speaking yeah. of the novel, there are definitely quite a number of differences. I'll start small though. So the ending is one of them. Instead of moving back to Boston, Mitch and Abby actually head to the Caribbean. Yeah, the Cayman Islands. Near the end, it wasn't Abby who drugged and seduced Avery. It was actually Tammy. Abby was just more of um, a side character in the book, whereas in the movie she has a much more significant role other than being um, Mitch's wife. Uh, and the one that I find very intriguing was that Mitch never tells Abby about the makeout session he had with that one girl on the beach. Really? She never knows throughout the entire book. There is a point where you think she's going to know once uh, Mitch gets the envelope that says photos do not bend. But when he opens it, it's completely empty. Huh. So this is just a means of showing that the firm is just toying with him. Huh. Hmm. But yeah, Neat. Abby's role is uh, not as prominent in the book. I think that's the big takeaway here. Do you know if Tammy's role is more prominent in the book then? I believe so. Again, I have not read the book. I'm just going off of what a Wikipedia article tells me. All right. All right. All right so, so the plot. I'm going to keep this brief because this has big boy terms that I don't know. This is a mess of a plot. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the story. All right. Let's go. All right. So uh, Mitch McDeer joins a law firm. He is pampered with. Wait, wait, a wait, new... wait, 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 wait. Mitch McDeer about to graduate near the top of his class. You gotta, gotta remember that. Almost <laughs> the top of his class at Harvard Law. Almost the top. Almost the top. All right. <laughs> I think I got... uh, so he joins a law firm called The Firm. He is pampered with uh, a nice house, uh, a lot of money. The firm just kind of eases him into this new life. Then... Uh, Mitch starts hearing rumors about some strange activity going on within the firm. He starts sorting through documents, he starts talking to people, and sure enough, the firm is doing some not-so-good things, like overcharging uh, their clients, breaking people's legs literally. No one who enters the firm can leave the firm, if you know what I mean. Some mafia yeah. business. Definitely is like a conspiracy theory. So... Mitch's goal by the end is to take down the firm while simultaneously trying to find a way out. I mean, there's some other stuff too, but this is pretty much the general gist. This may be light spoilers, but I think the best way to describe this movie is imagine if The Truman Show was a legal drama. I have never seen The Truman Show. I do want to, though. The fuck? You haven't seen The Truman Show? I have not. I think we've established he hasn't seen The Truman Show. We have? Oh my god. That is... You know, that's been on my, like, my list of things to recommend for, like, the longest fucking time. Uh, when, we eventually, when we eventually get to the Truman Show, you'll understand it's, what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's an inevitability. Yeah. I was gonna do it, like, the week I recommended Adaptation, but I decided to do Adaptation because I thought y'all saw the Truman Show. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it. Yeah, alright. So, um, I know Patrick hasn't seen this. Red, have you? I have not seen it. You have not, okay. Yeah. Right, Luga, uh, I recall last last time you said that you you know about this movie because of your grandmother. Yes, um, we simply just caught it on TV. She said she saw it about like six times back in the day. I caught about an hour and a half of it, like the last hour and a half. Uh, I've never seen it all the way through until very recently. So this I was this. my first full viewing. All right. So want to get into it? All right. Uh, all right. You guys want to start? start? Yeah, Patrick, why don't you start? Okay. Um, this is a bit of a tricky film to talk about because, well, let me start off with the positives. Um, you said, uh, going back to the score, it's fantastic. Yeah, I like, love the, the piano, score. The piano, it's, it's, it's great how it's all performed, basically on the piano, as you said. Like, my foot was tapping, like, right at the beginning. This is, it gives this off, is like, a Wall stuff. Street sort of vibe. Oh, it's it's great stuff. This the score is absolutely fantastic. Also, very strong performances. Tom Cruise was great. Yeah. Uh, Holly Hunter was great. Everybody was. Everybody Gene was Hackman, great. I think, was a. Yeah. Oh yeah. Was a favorite Holly of mine. Hunter, yeah, Holly Hunter and Gene Hackman—they stole the show for me. They're my favorite. 
Um, I, was actually was pleasantly, I was actually pleasantly surprised. I was not expecting Tammy to be as big a role as she was because the movie just nonchalantly introduces her. Well, and I thought she was just like a one-off character for that one scene. But no, she actually becomes pretty integral. I didn't expect to see Wilford Brimley. Yeah, that was a surprise. But yeah, this movie, there are strong performances, yeah. great score, some interesting surprises here and there. But, okay, what I'm about oh. to say next is what? Dean Norris was a surprise. He had, like, a small role. The squat man. Uh, Dean Norris is Hank from Breaking Bad, so that was just a surprise. Okay, uh, but also had, uh, Gary but Busey and other people like that, but yeah. All right, but here's the thing. What I'm about to say is entirely, like, a me thing, but this movie is about a firm. The firm, to be exact. And maybe I'm just stupid, but I don't know anything about firms. Or the bar exam, or money laundering, or tax fraud, or anything in that area. So a lot of what they're talking about in this movie, I can't really follow along with it. Fair enough, it's yeah. It's like well, completely foreign to me. Well, as someone who's seen every episode of Better Call Saul, I can say, listen, I understood this movie, I still thought it was boring as fuck. Oh my god. Like, I, I care about law a lot, um... I've seen a lot of legal dramas it's and not shit. That I, it's not that I don't care about law. Law is wa- very I, I want to be a lawyer. No, like, I just I, don't understand the nitty-gritty no, I like, I like of all of a lawyer. Like, I look up law shit for fun, but like, oh my god, this shit was so slow. Like, I thought really? there was like... I, I don't know. I thought there was an interesting story in there, but like, the pacing just killed it for me. I thought it was fucking monotonous. It I is almost like... three hours. Yeah, Man, this is fucking I this, boring. I thought this movie... Moved at a pretty fine pace. Like I thought it. But no, I I kind of see where Red is coming from. I do think this movie was, was pretty so slow. Boring. It like, definitely picked know, up this, near the middle. Yeah, the the second half like was was fine, but like the first half, I was like, Jesus Christ, get to the point. I was like, what the fuck? Like it was like I was like so fucking bored. And even when it did pick up, I was like, yeah, this is fine. But like I, I was I'm, I was pretty like whatever on this movie. I didn't I didn't really like it. I thought. Like, I don't know, I feel like if you cut out, like, a half hour from this movie, then maybe I'd like it, but, like, um... Because, like I said, the performance was really strong. I liked, you know, Holly Hunter's character and a couple of other stuff. Um, and there's, you know, kind of interesting plot, but, like, I... I don't know, this was kind of a miss for me. I thought it was really dull. What about you, Lugia? I'd say my experience was definitely more positive. Um, have, again, having seen, like, the last hour and a half prior and getting hooked on that i think is what kind of sold it for me personally again i do think the beginning is very slow it can get a little boring i i don't necessarily disagree with what red is saying but i think afterwards it's definitely worth it well at what point would you say the movie really starts to pick up i think as when um, five minutes in probably when he tells abby about what happened on the beach because I think that's when the gears start turning for um, not just their drama, but just in terms of Mitch's relationship with the firm as well, which is pretty much the main driving force of the movie. I like Tobin Bell. He was great. Tobin Bell, he was one of the hitmen. Uh, he's best known now for playing Jigsaw in the Saw franchise. Oh, yeah. What did you guys think of Edward? Edward. The one guy who had two scenes and got killed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he shows up. I'm like, oh, this guy's kind of neat. And he's dead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here I'm pretty sure that was that was Gary Busey, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I was Dang. like, huh. I was like, huh, that's a pretty big actor. And then he just died. I was like, oh, okay. When I think, I of think of it's Busey, supposed to highlight how serious the firm is when it comes to their workers. Yeah, I think of and... Gary Busey, I think of that family guy gag where he's looking in the mirror. Actually, to go back to the beginning of the movie for a second, I was completely thrown off because the first few minutes of this movie honestly had me laughing. Like, literally... It is Tom pretty Cruise's, lighthearted in the beginning. Literally, Tom Cruise's first line is, Son of a bitch! I mean, your honor, that was one hell of a shot. Because he's playing a game of basketball. Yeah. Yeah. And also, when Abby opens the door, Mitch just pulls her in and tosses her onto the couch. Yeah. And also, at one point, Tom Cruise does, like, a flip with, like, a little kid on the street. I'm and surprised he could even do a backflip. I mean, considering all the stunts he does in the Mission Impossible movies... Why wouldn't he be able to do a flip? But no, like, I was, like, completely thrown off. I'm like, why is this so funny? 
Actually, I do really like um, at the end of the movie when he actually meets up with uh, some guys from the mafia. He's, he he tells them everything that's going on, and they ask, "How do we know we can trust you?" And he says, "Like I am a ship that will never port." Something along those lines. I don't remember exactly what the quote was, but I just thought that was a good line. Well, we had a lot of exposition, like just a lot of dialogue throughout, and uh, it wasn't bad or anything, but it was just well, like you know, legal drama. That's yeah, I know. Of... Yeah, apparently this was incredibly legally accurate, which you know is neat. You know. That didn't stop him from blackmailing a police officer and murdering a man. Yeah. We haven't talked about Tom Cruise, which, uh, you know, considering that he's the whole reason we recommended this movie. I mean, it's not a Tom Cruise movie if he doesn't run and jump. Run. Yeah. It's, it, is, it is interesting that for a good majority of this movie, he's not running. Uh, I thought, like, that one scene where he's, like, walking, like, you see that one person doing, like, cartwheels or some shit. I was like, huh. That was just, yeah. like, a weird little visual. <laughs> I said that was... <laughs> That yeah, him I know, doing I know. the cartwheel was something that made me laugh. Yeah, no, but I, what I found funny is, like, they, like, established it, like, throughout, like, the movie. Like, uh, because they show, like, other people doing cartwheels earlier. And I was like, that is such a weird thing to, like, have a Chekhov's gun for. Especially in a legal <laughs> drama. <laughs> yeah, that's like what I'm saying. Like, this movie has, like, a bunch of, like, really absurd stuff that really sticks out. I'm like... Part of me wants to, like, love it, but I, I don't know. Something about it just found really dull. I was like, huh. Like, I shouldn't find this dull, but I do. One thing I do find is, like, all the Scientology parallels. Like, I think this movie came out before Tom Cruise joined Scientology. So I just thought it was funny that he joined Scientology after. Because, like, let's see. Tom Cruise's character is basically tripped into joining a group of people who turn out to be a hiding secrets, wiretap his house and listen in on his wife and his wife's conversation, kill anyone who tries to leave the group, are involved in a bunch of suspicious activity, constantly battle the government, especially the IRS, always gas them up so he stays on their side, and um, they drive his wife crazy so that she leaves. Because like all Did of these movie things predict the Scient future? Yeah, all of these are things that have been accused of happening in Scientology. I'm like, huh. Tom Cruise predicted his future. Do we have anything else? Um... Uh... I don't know, when he beat the shit out of Wilford Brimley, I thought that was kind of funny. It was also nice to see Gene Hackman just having a good time in the tropics. Performances were good. Uh, you know, pretty stacked cast, so expected. Uh, Actually, I have one thing to say. This is not related to the movie, but where it was filmed. This movie takes place in Memphis. You guys, Have you guys been to Memphis? No. I have not. Well, I've, I've driven, like, through it, but, like, I haven't stayed. I was in Graceland a few years ago, but that was that was it. But something I noticed, um, in the beginning of the movie, there's an aerial shot. You guys see a pyramid in the background? I did not. There was a I pyramid didn't. in the background. This is actually the famous Memphis Pyramid. And this, this, this was a structure created in the 90s that was used like as a sporting and concert venue. And you know what it is today? It is currently the largest Bass Pro fishing shop in the world. How the fuck? It's oh, a long... Yeah. It's a, it's a Dude, long... Rock, let's go! I saw a video very recently that went into the history of the Memphis Pyramid. Because <laughs> I, I, have, I have an interest in, like, abandoned locations or weird locations. Because the Memphis Pyramid was actually abandoned for a few years. It recently reopened a few years ago as a giant... Bass Pro Fishing Shop with, like, a hotel inside. And I'm like, what is this thing? How? Again, I will I can link you guys the video. It's so weird. <laughs> but it's just, it was in the background. I'm like, hey, I know that thing. That's a fishing shop now. Wow. Anyway, um... It's back are to you guys, the firm. Yeah, are you guys familiar with the TV show? There's the firm a... TV show? Yeah, that's what I found out. Apparently... You know, a few years ago, this got adapted into a TV show. No. Uh, again, I I had never heard oh, of this Oh, shit, movie there is. Prior... It's a sequel. Really? A sequel? Oh, I didn't know it followed up on the events. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, apparently Anyways, this, place, so... this takes place ten years after. You know what this movie oddly reminded me of? Eyes Wide Shut, the Stanley Kubrick movie that also stars Tom Cruise. Because mm. it also had, like, this sort of, um... Him getting wrapped up into this weird, like, conspiracy thing and, uh, you know, his wife, issues with his wife. And I was like, huh, interesting. There's also some Scientology ties there, too. But I was like, um, yeah, I, uh, I obviously think Eyes Wide Shut is a much better movie. 
I mean, granted, Stanley Kubrick, so you'd expect that, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Overall, I, I definitely say just my biggest issue with this movie is the length, you know, because I like the performances. There's a bunch of, like, you know, neat stuff throughout, but, like, this would be, like, a great if it was, like, an hour and 40 minutes long, but instead it's two and a half hours long. I'm like, oh, my fucking God. Like, it is, it is just, like, an ordeal, you know? And there's way I too will, much I will, ad- I will admit my interest did dwindle, like, by... By the time like there was an hour left, yeah. Like again, I feel like like I'm 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 laying on thick that I dislike this movie, but I don't. I don't hate it. There's plenty of stuff to like. I would definitely say it was like worth a watch, but like it. I'm more, I'm more positive towards it, but it I'm felt not... like work. Like that's that's what I'm saying. It didn't feel like I was I I wasn't really having fun. It just felt like I, I was working. I was like, all right. I'm more positive towards it than you, but I'm not like. Over over the moon about it. it I'm was, probably it the was, most positive just, out of all of us. I just again, I'm I don't I couldn't. This isn't really stuff I know, so yeah. I there wasn't really much for me to latch on to. Personally, I but think like, it's very again, interesting to tap into the sort of aspect of society, even if I don't yeah. understand a lot of the terminology or practices. Yeah. But again, what I, what I what I did like, I think is great. I love the music. I love the performances. There were some yeah. new ideas in here. The scores, the performances, ideas. I agree. Like I fully agree. All that stuff was good. There's great stuff in here. It's just all tied together by stuff I'm not really interested in. Yeah. Like I said, there's a good hour and forty minutes in here, but then there's also just like an additional like 50 minutes in the movie and i'm like uh, those 50 minutes really drags down my experience so um, i don't know i feel like this again, is a movie i liked I'll... it i liked it but i feel like this is a movie i'll i'll give another watch at some point maybe i'll see something more that i didn't the first time so uh, as, as of right now i don't i don't, I don't think i'm ever going to rewatch right. this movie but i felt it was worth a watch i'd give it like a 5 out of 10 i'd say like 7.5 like i don't i don't dislike it i like this one a lot but yeah, yeah five, this... five out of ten is my middle of the road score. Like I didn't hate it, I didn't like it, but you know. Yeah, they're def- was, this movie is definitely flawed, but I came out still liking it. Uh, Grandma, if you're watching, I- I'm I'm sorry though. <laughs> <laughs> eh, you can't win them all, and that's fine. Yeah. So uh, I guess that's everything, right? Yeah, I, I said I was. I said I was reminded of the Truman Show. Right. Any movies spring to you guy? You guys? Um, I said uh, Eyes Wide Shut. I believe, right? Yeah. yeah. Eyes Wide what Shut. You, there's. I forgot the name, but there's like a similar story of like one guy getting into like this mafia gangster organization. He wants out. Training Day. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> and we just saw that not too long ago too. How? We did. How could I forget the name? Uh, yeah, I'll I'll say training day. All right. Anything else, or are we pretty much good with the firm? I think I know, we've yeah. said everything we wanted to say. All right. Case closed. <laughs> uh, recommendation for next week. I believe it's your turn, Patrick. Yes, it is. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This was not easy. I had like five different movies running through my head. But I ultimately narrowed it down to two. And I actually think I'm going to let you guys pick. Oh, options. Okay. Mm. Yes. All right. I'll say this. They're, they're both linked to Elvis in some way. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, Johnny Bravo? Ba- the release of Baz Luhrmann's Elvis has Hoo-ha. got me thinking. Yeah. And I guess and... next week will be a double review because we're all going to be seeing Elvis. Yeah. Well... All right, one is a movie starring Elvis, and the other is... Bye Bye Birdie? No. We, we, we saw that, that already. I know, that's why it'd be funny. Just be like, we're going to do it again. I, don't I mean, there is a made-for-TV movie of Bye Bye Birdie, but I have no plans to choose that because it's... What about the same? sequel? <laughs> oh, yeah, but I forgot the, the sequel. sequel. There's only... There is, but I could only find a bootleg of Act 1, and even then it cuts off. Ah. Like, with 15 minutes to spare. But... Is this one of those movies that Elvis starred in? Because I know, like, he acted mm, in a few things. Okay, here, here's... Let, let me just narrow down what the two choices are. The first is King Creole, which is Elvis... The, a movie with Elvis, and he says it's his personal favorite movie he's ever done. The second movie 
is one starring Austin Butler, who plays Elvis in the Baz Luhrmann movie. Apparently, what movie is that? I didn't. I didn't. This is a movie I haven't seen in years, and I didn't even know he was in it. But he is, and he's actually one of the prominent characters. And that is a movie you guys might have heard of called Aliens in the Attic. What? I've seen that movie, but what? I've seen Aliens in the Attic. He's in it. Huh. He's in that movie. And I'm torn torn between the two because... Fuck your options. Viva Las Vegas. All right, no. Okay, okay. So let me get this clear. Our choices are Alien in the Attic or a movie from the director of Casablanca. Yes. Here's why I'm torn. I'm torn because I want to talk about an Elvis movie because I've actually never seen a movie with Elvis in it, like the real Elvis. But my last recommendation was also a musical. I don't give a fuck. I'm voting for King Creole. Yeah, same here. All right, then. King Creole it is. I remember not liking Aliens in the Attic, so fuck that. All right, that works. I haven't We're I talking haven't about one movie. of the greatest classic filmmakers ever. Like, this guy's a legend. And also, I, what I do remember about Aliens in the Attic is that it took place over the 4th of July. And I'm like, oh, 4th of July is coming up, so... Yeah. I don't know. That made it easy. Yeah, it's funny. Like, this movie is from the director of Casablanca. You know, the movie that's often voted by critics as the greatest film of all time. Like, it's usually this or Citizen Kane. Huh. I was also, le- I was also, I was also thinking about Aliens in the Attic because, you know me, I like to choose weird movies nobody remembers. Here's the thing, though. All of us have seen Aliens in the Attic. We remember it. But do we remember oh, it? Well, I don't remember I it. I remember watching it. Austin Butler, he was like one of those uh, Disney, like, um, child actors or whatever. But okay, yeah, cool. Uh, and actually, what's funny, what's funny is that, Lugia, you chose The Firm because your grandmother. King Creole is a movie my grandmother told me about. Like, huh. Because I met her, if not, I, I visited her not too long ago. And we were talking about Elvis, and I asked her, what movies with Elvis have you seen? And she said, my favorite is King Creole. It's widely so, regarded his best movie. Mm-hmm. It's like his highest so, rated movie. It's interesting started. how that connects. So, Red, you gotta pick a movie that your grandma chooses next. Talk to your grandma. Actually, I have a movie that I've been wanting to talk about that. Ah, oh, but it's also a Western. Fuck, my last movie was a Western. Shit, alright, I'll, I'll figure something. Fuck, I'm doing- dude, I'm doing another musical. I mean, what's all stopping right. you by this point? Alright. Then we'll talk about a different Indian movie. Another epic. But yeah, it'll definitely- it'll, I guess I'll have to do an Indian movie. Because <laughs> that's what my family, uh... All right, so uh, how do we want to close this out? Uh, remember, nobody in the firm has ever failed the bar exam. Objection, Your Honor. That clown's, uh... Oh, God. I don't know. What? Have you guys... It was really funny. Like, two days ago, uh, Ace Attorney just became a huge meme again because some guy made, like, a parody video. And um, everyone's talking about the Ace Attorney clown again. Objection, yeah, yeah. Your Honor. I have a bad yeah. case of clussy fever, and I want to make whoopee with her cushions. Uh, we need to show I'm not this even going to question what's going <laughs> We're on. We're keeping this in. Oh, we are. I'm showing you this video. We're posting this, actually. <laughs> but yeah, um, well, what should I, uh, we, we all passed the bar exam or whatever. I forgot what that yeah. was the line. Uh, all right. Nobody's failed it. And if you do... The only way you're getting out of the firm is in a box.